My mate Gerald said his hardest kept secret is telling his parents he's an orphan. But here on the Thrill House channel, we don't keep secrets. So here are 10 mods to improve your Minecraft world. Drink some water, you dehydrated sausage, and let's get right into it. Torch bow gives a whole new function to torches and bows. Now you can shoot your torches with your bow to light up the area ahead of you, making it super easy to light up areas without having to walk to them. Or if you want to spawn proof your own area, it can be done with ease now. Don't even have to leave your own home. You can also shoot nine torches at once for maximum efficiency, and it just looks cool. But it gets even better. You can even set mobs on fire with it, making it easier to get cooked food from your farm animals. And it's just easier to send orphans to meet their parents. Let's travel back in time and catch the Spanish flu with medieval weapons. This adds in a bunch of new weapons that have some useful skills. We now have an axe that we can throw at enemies for you wimps out there that don't want to get too close. And that can also be used as good decoration. There is a javelin that you can yeet around to turn mobs into kebabs and also a good way to enter the Olympics with javelin practice. A scythe sword which is useful for harvesting crops mainly wheat, and the bendy sword just looks so cool. Oh, you even get cool animations with some of these weapons, like holding it with two hands and moving your arms above your head. I really like how the mod creators went above and beyond to add this in. A staff of healing so you can do some shazam magic to heal yourself, but make sure mobs aren't near you or they will send you to the graveyard. It takes a bit to do and it only heals you up a certain amount of hearts. A battle axe that has knockback over 9,000, so it does some damage while also protecting you, and it just looks so damn cool. There is a longer sword that you can use to block like a shield, much easier than having to craft a shield, as you can use your meat stick to protect yourself. It clears up so much space on your screen, but it doesn't protect you from bow and arrows. So if you want to fight the skeleton, bring a shield along. You can also ride a horsey and go jousting with the lance to inflict more damage with the inertia of your oversized doggo. And who doesn't want to do a drive-by in their horse doggy mobs on the head? You can also use a reaper, which has a chance of making mobs bleed, which can be effective in hordes of mobs. It doesn't work on every hit, but every now and then, the mob will take damage when you don't touch it. This is a great little mod that can be perfect for mod packs, and each item looks great with useful special effects. Do you ever feel like someone is watching you or that your uncle is right up in your booty? Well, don't stress out, it's just a creeper. With peeping creepers, creepers will now no longer explode unless you look at them. And this is super OP because when there's two behind you, they will kiss each other until you turn around and look at them. And you can even lure the creeper to those annoying children and destroy everything they love. And if they survive that, use their freshly destroyed bed to put a halo above their head. After a long day of fisting spiders, you just want to relax. So come over to your hammock provided by the Sleep Tight mod. This mod gives you a hammock so you can sleep in style and rock yourself to sleep. And instead of sleeping straight away, you get full control of looking around so you can look up at the night sky. You can also swing side to side. And if you do it enough, you'll fling yourself out of it and get an achievement. And the best part of the hammock, it's used for daytime sleeping. So now you can get to your nights quicker. There is also a sleeping bag which can be placed down anywhere during the night and it gets picked back up when you wake up. And the sleeping bags have a nice look to them. Perfect to use around campfires. This mod also adds in bed bugs. And when they get near a bed, they scurry to bury themselves in it. And when they're inside, they look so happy bouncing around but you can't sleep in the bed anymore so there's only one thing left for you to do blow up the bed then go and break another villager's bed slap him in the face to assert dominance then go and punch Derek in the face and wake him up to steal his bed. This mod adds in new sleeping mechanics so you can now lay down without sleeping and look around. And you can also get nightmares, which will make it so you can't sleep for the rest of the night. Oh look, another sleeping mod. Comforts adds in a new sleeping bag so you can go camping with your mates. All you need to craft a sleeping bag is three pieces of wool and boom, you got yourself a sleeping bag. You can place these down anywhere to sleep your troubles away. Once you wake up from your slumber, you automatically pick up the sleeping bag and you can be on your jolly way. It also works like beds, so when mobs are nearby, sleeping is vaulted, so be sure to sleep in a safe environment. Do you load items into your furnace like this? Well, stop being an absolute peasant and start utilizing your time. Fast Entity Transfer lets you place items in the furnace, smoker, and blast furnace without opening a UI. Now, all you do is run up and whack it in without wasting your time. Your parents don't know this secret, but it's just as easy to pull out. Just click like you're about to break it, and the item you inserted will be in your hand ready to use. A nifty little mod for you to save time, so you can break your own speedrun record. Let's make your world come more alive with items to mobs. This mod turns a couple of game items to mobs that will drop that item when they are eliminated. First up, we got the cauldron. That became thick enough that we could ride it. This portable swimming pool is a great way to travel around, and he just looks so damn cute. Just don't let iron golems near them. They hate cute things.
Next, we got the Totem of Undying. This golden villager floats around and is harmless and a bit tricky to kill. But if you manage to kill it, you'll get a free totem. Did someone say KFC? The furnace is now a walking fast food pet. All you gotta do is put some coal inside him and he gets a cute little face. And then whack your food of choice in there and he spits it out instantly for a quick snack so you never go hungry again. Once his coal runs out, he stops moving but put another piece in it and he's good to go. Oh, and he just looks so damn cute and he also fights for you to protect you. The perfect companion. There is annoying little ants that drop shears when you kill them. They also attack, but they're easily defeated. Iron golems also don't like them. This little guy is what spawns on your bedroom floor after what you did last summer. This spawn of Satan is hostile and swims around only causing pain. He doesn't need to touch you, just get close enough to him and you will start feeling the ouchies. This thing just looks so creepy moving around. Next, we got the Firefox, not to be confused with the web browser. He is consistently on fire and and burns everything around it. But don't slap it, otherwise it will try to turn you into a Thanksgiving turkey. If you manage to kill this guy, he drops blaze rods, so you don't have to go to the nether anymore. There is also an annoying little redstone bug-like endermite, and he zooms around, so it's kind of hard to hit it. But it doesn't do much damage. So if you've got your pet furnace around, he will help you save the day. And lastly, there's a nether quartz crab that spawns in Soul Sand Valley. He is harmless, and he always looks like someone kicked his dog. This is a great little mod to use, and if you manage to kill any of these animals, they do drop items that can help you out in your world. Mouse Wheelie is a great client mod to improve the items in your UI. Now you can use your mouse wheel to move items out of your inventory and even to put them back in your inventory. Makes it super easy and feels cleaner when grabbing items now. And you can even be more precise with the items and pick up as many as you want. This is definitely much easier than having to click and drag. Some of you guys always ask what shaders I'm running and I use three different shaders in my videos. Let's go over them. I use complimentary reimagined for my gameplay which looks great and keeps a vanilla vibe to it. Overall it's a great shader. The settings I don't change too much. I just use ultra settings and sometimes use PBR to get a little bit of a 3D look on some blocks and I change the fog settings and the cave lighting settings to suit what I like. For my replay footage and thumbnails I mainly use complementary shaders. These are also set to ultra settings but I use these shaders mainly for the depth of field to give my shots a blurry background to enhance my clips a bit more focusing on certain objects. Here is what certain depth of field looks like. It will take some time playing around to get used to it, as moving the camera makes it a bit tricky to focus. And if you want to make your gameplay footage look a bit better, I'd recommend using distance blur as it doesn't focus in and out of the objects right in front of you. And lastly, I've just started using rethinking voxels for some of my intros and other clips. I haven't adjusted any settings on these shaders as they are near perfect to run straight out of the gate. And the lighting in these shaders is cleaner than Mr. Sheen just so crispy. If you guys want, I can make a video showcasing more shaders as there's heaps out there that have different styles and different effects. It could suit any style or world you want. Just drop a comment below and let me know. Trajectory preview is for you noobs out there who can't hit your shots. This little mod shows you where your arrows are going to land before you launch them, so you get an accurate show and never have to waste an arrow again. Also useful for practicing your long range shots. This also works for ender pearls and snowballs, although it's hard to see where the pearl will land for a long distance, and it's definitely useful when used close up to throw your balls at a cow's head. And I've heard YouTube has a great accuracy with recommending good videos, so give it a click and let me know what you think. I'll see you legends over there.